The following video may contain sensitive topics. The views and opinions of the presenter to these are plainly his own. Furthermore, any and all views and opinions of the presenter do not in any way reflect the views, opinions, statements, and advocacies of his personal contacts, his family, his affiliations, and his profession. While the presenter makes a commitment that all content is original, he is obliged to cite references or acknowledge resources mentioned or used in the production of this video. This disclaimer is also written in the description below. There is a legend about the phoenix, the mythical firebird who at the end of its life dies in ashes, only to rise again and repeat the cycle of life. Its Asian counterpart, loosely but fair enough, is the Feng Huang, or ho -o. but here in the Philippines, we in general, and specifically the Maranao people, call it the Sari Manok. And there is one broadcast media network that utilized the mythical bird as, as its mascot in the 1990s, ABS-CBN. Hi guys, Ian here, and welcome to a very special episode of Salty Reactions, where commentaries need an extra dose of salt. Pardon me if this recording would have a lot of dog barks. Nakakaamoy ng pagkain because it's already around 10.30 in the morning. Panahon na ng lutuan. So, you know dogs. On Thursday, the 7th of May, after 24 hours of silence, TV Patrol, Phoenix-like and true to its Sarimanok character, returns to the TV screen with what remains of ABS-CBN after its free TV and terrestrial radio frequency services have been shut down due to the National Telecommunications Commission's dis uh, cease and desist order. In the hours before the return to broadcast to whatever platforms they still have, many pundits have already ex aired their mixed sentiments about the Kapamilya shutdown on free-to-air media. But in this episode, we only tackle two opposing statements, that of Coco Martin, the guy portraying Ricardo Lalisay in the TV uh, series adaptation of Fernando Poe Jr.'s uh, film Ang Provinciano and national artist for literature F. Chonil Jose who is an underrated old timer thanks to Enrile having most of the spotlight. Now we are still in the midst of a global pandemic so I still urge people to do what they can to keep safe and sane because of the lockdowns and the quarantines and the disruptions. But if there's one thing that makes the mental aspect of this quarantine debilitating is the shutdown of ABS-CBN. While it is logical that people should look at other sources of news through TV and radio or what's left of it, for some in the boondocks it's impossible since most broadcast signals still follow the analog format and time and again it has brought people down. And that's why many think it's time to consider to make the full switch to digital. But before we go far, let's get some context. Coco Martin, from the start of his network's crisis, has been into Cardo Dalisay mode. That is, his way of being berserk. He's even resorted to challenging the powers that be that allegedly silenced ABS-CBN's regulated frequencies into a fist fight. We have to remember that uh, Coco came from a not too good but not too bad family background, most likely living in the slums of Manila. So to take into context, this is basically Coco's default attitude if he's upset. Now while demanding for the return of the Kapamilya Network on free TV and radio, and uh, the, de the demanding of it is commendable, and mind you, the right thing to do. People should avoid using ad misericordiam arguments and showing empathy to agitate. 
That's what the legal fronts and the militant activists wanted anyway. Rather than adding fuel to the fire of sedition, use the outrage to pressure the powers that be to deliver what they say should be their job so that people can trust the due process of the law. In short, legislators must legislate ABS-CBN's frequency franchise on the bloody double if they do not want to be defenestrated, basically thrown out of the window. While I understand the sentiments of people like Coco Martin, who I believe is just putting himself in the shoes or the lack thereof, of his audience and fans, it is too dangerous and too early to make decisions and statements like he did because based on recent political history, it may repeat itself and may endow people like Coco the faux sense of enlightenment of Joseph Ejercito Estrada or even the misguided charisma of FPJ. That doesn't mean, however, opinions like these should be dismissed altogether as they have valid reasons. But to seamlessly transition to the other side of the issue and to make sure to be fair, F. Chonil Jose, the old writer whose longevity record shadows that of Juan Ponce Enrile, wrote a piece on Facebook entitled ABS-CBN, A Requiem. There he highlighted the alleged duality of the Lopezes, the family that owns the network. He said, and I quote, I sympathize with the hundreds who will lose their jobs, but I'll not mourn the passing of ABS-CBN. Its demise, I dare say, is even good for Philippine democracy if it also means the dismantling of the Lopez empire. To conclude, the Lopezes played the double game. If they were were vociferously anti-American, but were the beneficiaries of American largress in the sugar quota gift from America. Their writers included liberals, fellow travelers, and communists, but Eugenio Lopez himself personified the lowest form of capitalism. The Filipinos do not really need ABS-CBN. It does not produce goods or food. It has certainly entertained millions, but it did not diminish poverty. Again, freedom worked for the rich, but not for the Filipinos. And that's the end of the quote. The link to the full statement he made is on the description below. So I I highly recommend you better read it in full. Then leave him something. Comment or whatever. Or violent reaction. It's up to you. I understand the old man wants to remain relevant in the 21st century as he or his protégés somehow researched about the Lopez family and the short-lived meme statement the duality of man. And I absolutely think he still is, but I dare say that old man as he is, the wordsmithing of his musings seem to have been disillusioned already and his judgments clouded. He's already 95 for goodness sake, so go figure. Now, here's my take. To Coco, please do not take Evelyn Beatrice Hall's words out of context, the one that he Uh, the one that she, rather, uh, gave to Voltaire. Because many disagree with you, that's for sure. And as much as it pains me for ABS-CBN to go off air on free TV and radio, the management needs to reset its moral compass due to its recent content you may have been part of, or at least you condone to do because it's your job to entertain. That does not mean I dismiss your point. Even Nico David doesn't. In fact, lalaban ako ng patayan para masabi mo ang mga ganyan na walang halong ka ba at pag-aalinlangan. In short, be Coco Martin for once, mate. Leave Cardo Dalisay to the scriptwriter. And I say this as a fellow devotee of the suffering lord of Quiapo. Kapatid, maghunus dili ka. To Mr. FSJ, I mean no disrespect. And I certainly do not espouse such given your accolades. But this specific commentary is interesting at best and abysmal at worst. While I think it's true for the Kapamilya Network to reconsider and dis- and or discern their branding in the service of the Filipino, at least entertainment-wise, and reset their moral compass, it shouldn't have come to something similar to offering a eulogy to a funeral 
and a condescending and mocking one at that. It's like being the basher who pressed F to pay respects in the comment section. But to your credit, I somehow see that your statement is much more stable and genuine than the troll fabricated ones. And if compared to the Jimmy Bondock statement almost a year ago, yours didn't condescend into a sense of schadenfreude or one finding happiness into in, with another's misery. I'm pretty sure GMA having its own misgivings and issues won't even result to such low blows. And to everyone, I say this. This is the bloody reason why I don't watch TV anymore. At least... Uh, when it comes to entertainment. The judgment of people has been clouded by this shock and awe act of the NTC which due to its chilling effect makes people say what they say especially during this pandemic. While they all make some sense it only fulfills the McLuhanist prophecy of using content as a distraction to much more important issues like the COVID-19 pandemic. Marshall McLuhan says, The content of a medium is like the juicy piece of meat carried by the burglar to distract the watchdog of the mind. In conclusion, I fondly remembered the Kapamilya Network station ID as a little kid in the 90s. What I would like to see, should ABS-CBN return to air on free TV and radio, as a man now in my late 20s, is the reincarnation of the Sare Manok. This time, it should be digitized and somehow different from its 1990s form. Reflecting, I guess, the network's official callers and their renewed commitment to not only discern their content but also to be what their branding states, to remain in the service of the Filipino. But thus saith Koheleth, to everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under the heaven. He hath made everything beautiful in his time. Also he hath set the world in their heart, so that no man can find out the work that God maketh from the beginning to the end. I said in mine heart, God shall judge the righteous and the wicked, for there is a time there for every purpose and for every work. With all that said, this is Ian. Reminding you to keep your buko juice sweet and your tinola salty. And at all times, be the salt of the earth and the light of the world. Until then, let us continue to both flatten the curve and hope and pray for the best for the media industry, industry at large. See you next time. Bye guys.